Hello everyone, it's Fish Easy, live on a Sunday evening and enjoying a brilliant opportunity to discuss with you some green water. We're going to be discussing a couple of things today. I hope you uh, have a moment to just stick around and see the uh, way I process green water and why I use it. Also, we'll take a look at some rams and the rams that we're going to be looking at are um, rams eggs actually. I have some new ones. We'll give a moment for uh, individuals to come up. But uh, we're going to be looking at this pair in here, I believe. Yes, I believe there's a batch right back in there. You can see the male and the female. So this is going to be our uh, subject today, but also um, I'm very happy that everybody can join when they can. Zebra Pickle fans, welcome. Welcome to Fish Easy on a Sunday evening. I wanted to uh, just take a moment to uh, do something that is uh, educational, at least it explains for people. Hi Sandy, welcome, and we're all just kind of gathering together right now. We're, we're going to take a look at some of the processes of uh, green water and uh, why I use it, uh, when I use it, etc. So this is, uh, if, you're, if you're on the replay crew, please, please, please leave a um, uh, comment down below that you're on the replay crew so I can uh, acknowledge because I do answer any questions that people have and I will put them down in the uh, comment section so if somebody has a comment it would be fine. So uh, just to give you a quick rundown of what's been going on in the last uh, week we have uh, a lot of things that have been going on and just in this room uh, if I just kind of give it a changeover on the nursery side We've got some black ram batch here that are not quite on liftoff. Uh, these guys uh, are on the bottom. It looks like a nice batch. And there was no fungusing issues whatsoever. But I'm expecting these to pop up in about, uh, I don't know, another one more day. This batch of uh, German blues is looking tremendous. In fact, tonight I think I will move them into a bigger tank because I don't want to wait until they're bigger before uh, there's just too many in here so that's another thing I'm going to do in our small profile um, cans or glass jars what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tonight also combine these Lucy's these are Lucipinus and I'm going to take these uh, they, they've been growing fine and they really do well in these containers I don't know why but having no corners I think is definitely a help but um, I did start giving them pellets like this morning and that was the first time instead of brine shrimp and they, did, they didn't like it at first but I see it's all cleaned up so after a while they finally eat it away but as you can see there's a size difference but in order to save on tank space they are a colony fish so they really like to be together uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these three cans now that they're big enough at a smaller age these ones were too much bigger than the very smallest and they could easily eat them. But now these have caught up in a, into a size level that I can mix them. They are three different batches but not separated by very much. So these three can be put together. I'm going to use one of these uh, two and a half gallon uh, cans. You, you may recall I had a five gallon up here on the top. So now I'm going to redesign the top uh, shelf here and just to hold one, two, three, four two and a half gallons with the purpose of having places to put newborn uh, not newborn but you know small fry batches like these and uh, here is interesting this is a um, uh, this is also a German blue batch and they went on liftoff today so I haven't fed them yet I haven't started feeding them and there was one of our subscribers that also had a niche situation where he was um, losing a lot of fry even before this stage so we were trying to get to the bottom of that but this is when they come in to lift off they're at the top now so today uh, they're going the first feeding will be vinegar eels because the eels will stay in the water column for at least 24 hours so they will have plenty to nip, nip at and I will probably reduce the uh, flow now that I don't need it so much I just want to break the surface but if they're going to hang out at the top and in the in the and I want them to be able to um, attack and go after the um, vinegar eels. Um, 
here uh, we got a new batch of of uh, this is um, Piscolari. This is uh, angelfish. So this particular pair is the same pair as these, a later batch. But these two are uh, going into a 20 gallon. There's a lot of shifting around on the weekends, and uh, these these came out of a pair of uh, Aquamaliks angelfish, and so they were the red caps gold um, pair, and they're just they done very well here. Uh, just so you know, I do do change the water um, two or three times a day. So um, that keeps the water from going bad. And they eat and eat and eat and uh, they keep getting refreshed on the water. So it's quite easy. I just pour it in uh, the top. I just pour it in the top and I have it uh, actually right here in the, in the bucket. This uh, bucket here contains water that's been dripping from the faucet. And so I just use that and I take um, uh, about a two liter container and I just scoop it up and pour it in. And so it will lift the uh, surface of the, the top of the tank from there to the top. And then it will just drop back down because I have this overflow right here. It will just flow right out. So that's what's going on there. And uh, our little batch, latest little batch of discus over here are doing stupendous. Oh, mama doesn't like that. Oh, yeah, I can see she's getting a little more territorial. Uh, instead of running in the back, when the when the fry get a little bit bigger, they get a little more anxious. She will jump out of the water to attack me. Uh huh. She's ready to go. Let me see if oh, see if she goes for it. I put my finger in here. She sometimes attacks it. Yeah, she is quite a mama. There's a good good pair. They take good pair of their youngsters. And I'm going to uh, uh, as a matter of habit I'm going to take these fish and move them at three weeks of age so these were hatched uh, on July 20th and so at three weeks of age I'm going to today is August what 8th or 7th and I'm going to move these at three weeks of age exactly because I found that at three weeks they're on brain baby brain shrimp and the parents uh, are going to get attacked and their skin might start to suffer quality and have issues with uh, uh, sores and things from the eating of the parents from the fry. You see them just kind of picking away at the surface. So watch them. They'll just kind of like dig in. They're just digging in. You see a couple of them. I saw one second there. They just kind of look at look at the papa. You see how they're just eating the skin, the mucus uh, in in the skin that is produced. But they'll start eating the scales when they get hungry. Though. Let me. Uh, let me just while I'm here, I'm going to grab some baby brine shrimp. And I do this uh, as often as I can, maybe two or three times a day. With my left hand, I'm just going to pull this up. And I'm going to put it in. And we'll just put in a little batch and da-da. So watch the fry. They're going to start eating. We're going to start eating that. Let's see if I can hold the camera still for a second. And as you can see, once they see the baby brine shrimp, they go after it and they fill their tummies and they're not so hungry. And then they kind of leave the parents alone. So the more often you feed them, the better off they are, the faster they grow. And uh, it's just a matter of being very diligent with uh, constant small feedings throughout the day. So that's what I'm going to do there. Um, Yesterday I was cleaning this one out. This is uh, ready to go almost. I just need to add a strainer on the bottom of that uh, siphon tube for when I make water changes. I think I will add the um, over the back filter that I put normally there. It's not in there installed right now, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in and use this uh, again as a grow out. A little update on the other pair of discus. They are, of course, laying right now. They're in the middle of uh, laying eggs. Uh, they just had a batch, but after the fry became free swimming, they disappeared. Probably ate them. It seems as though this pair does a beautiful job at having babies, but only about every fifth spawn. Not every one. And I'm hoping for maybe a larger group. Seems like uh, they do better when there's a larger group. Probably because they can't seem to get them all. So we've got... Um uh, several things going on this week. I uh, just want to show you something exciting before we get into the real meat and potatoes 
of our live stream today. These guys are looking stupendous. Look at the color in these um, Threadfin rainbows. So I haven't put a mop in yet, but I think it's about time. I've got uh, more males than females. I might break them up into two tanks and put... Um, the males are showing off. Look at that. They do that. They're, they're just... They're just a neat little fish, but they're a nano fish, so uh, they do grow very slowly. So if I have uh, any fry, I do know there's going to be some real issues with uh, raising the fry. Initially, uh, paramecia works very well because they have small mouths, and then I get to the point where I can feed them baby brine shrimp. But um, once I get that going, uh, I, I should be able to do okay. I like to breed uh, a number of these. If I can get uh, several several um, trios going it would be awesome so now uh, the last to see anything else I want oh we're gonna we're gonna take this pair here I think there's the female and the male is a electric blue and I noticed that they have eggs back there I don't know if you can just barely see it in the in the film oh yeah in the reflection look at the reflection so right down you see right right oh my fingers too big right down in there you can see in the plate, that's a reflection of the tank on the right. And a good, a good size batch. We're gonna take those out today. Okay, let's get busy, I think. Um, there is um, there's, uh, a black ram pair that we, we were looking at those babies lifting off. Not quite lifting off. Well, that's from this pair here. And they've done very well. So it's a beautiful pair. So I hope, uh, I'm hope they're gonna be able to. I have a couple of spare females. So I'm going to actually, uh, I might pull this female out and put another female in because down below I have some female like this one and she hasn't been with another ram for a few weeks and she's building up and I think she might be ready to go. You know, uh, the glare is kind of bad. It's always hard to... I was thinking about this the other day. It seems as though most people have beautiful pictures of their dogs and cats, but taking pictures of fish is a challenge it's very difficult when I see good pictures of fish I am always in awe so let's see what we can get going um oh uh -huh. and finally before we move too much further what's this contraption well I'm trying something new this is something that Aqua Malik uh, mentioned Mr. Uh, Malik says try this put instead of inside um, so instead of inside, what, what he said was put, we're going to put nothing in the tank. And so there's no fish in the tank, just plenty of green and plants and things growing. And in here, I put the uh, CPDs. These, I don't know if we can see them. There's one there. Okay, there's a few moving around. There we go. They're moving around. So there's a there's a trio of CPDs in here, and I put a plastic divider right down here inside. They fit perfect, and then turn up the flow. And what's going to happen is, with a little bit of moss at the bottom, as they lay, um, the eggs and babies get pulled out because of the flow. They get pulled into this final section. And when they go hopping around, when the hatch will go out, they'll just flow right out the top there and into the tank. So that that's the situation. Um, I, I, I'm anxious to see if this works. So it may take a while before the CPDs uh, start uh, popping out and seeing them. I haven't seen any in here since the, I set this up and it's been up in for about a week. But you know what? Um, it is a lot of small little microorganisms and things. This, this tank is just full of little stuff growing and living because there's no fish in it. So when these little fish get, uh, uh, shall we say, um, swept into the tank, I'm expecting this to uh, start populating. But that's the idea. We're going to see what happens. And I think I need to just check back and we'll just see what we can find uh, in future live streams. Okay. So let's uh, look behind me. Uh, behind me I have a 
uh, two and a half gallon. This is the green water. And uh, let's see, before we get going, what comments? Evan Nolan, welcome. And and uh, you, you're trying green water too. Great. Now, I know some people have tried green water and they try feeding them with uh, different things. I'm using, I'm using this two and a half gallon. And uh, I just have a light. This is an LED light. It's bright. LED lights are bright. This is like a... Um, let me see how many watts this is. I'm not even sure. It says, hmm, still quite hot. Let me see if I can get it out. Okay. It's a 750 lumen. Uh, it's also 1.5 million. Oh, there it is. It's like a 13 watt. It's a 13 watt light bulb. So we have a 13 watt light bulb. And I have green water only in here, but sometimes what happens is other little creatures will start growing in there, and so that's no good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show how I do it. Um, before we touch the tank, I'm going to show you what the what, what where I'm putting these fish. I mean fish. They're not fish. They're uh, daphnia. So I'm putting them in containers like this one, jars like this one. And I have a tank like that one. This is a little five gallon. Now, it's been a while since I cleaned this one out or reset it. And I think it's time to reset this one. It's kind of grody on the sides and everything. But um, if you look down, there's only a few Daphnia in here. So it's time, I think, to clean it out. And I'm going to just totally reset it. And the way I'm going to reset oh, you can see barely, right? Right up there. You see right here? There's the Daphnia. I will take a net and and take those out, grab them, and then I will actually clean the tank completely and replace it with um, just clean water. And I'm going to then feed the water and put the Daphnia in. But I'm going to feed it with the green water from here. This is our two and a half gallon. Now there's no Daphne in here. If I put Daphne in here, they'll just multiply and eat it all up and then I'll be out of green water. So the green water that I use, I can't put live things in there because I don't want them to eat it up and that's the, the trick. But still somehow seed shrimp and other little creatures um, somehow end up getting in there. I don't know how they do it. But um, when I start to see that on the sides, I start to see little spots as you can see here. And that's sometimes seed shrimp. Let me see, I don't know if those are moving or not. Yeah. Yeah. So before those proliferate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reset this tank. And at the same time, you have a situation why sometimes you would want to have more than one container with Daphne in it. Because I, I, I put green water in here with Daphne in this first one. And you, I don't know if you can see, but there is... There's nothing in here. Okay? They died out. This one, if I can see anything in this one, looks like there's one. Maybe not. I don't even see what that is. That, okay. There's one at the top here. There's just a tiny little one Daphne. You see it moving around? That's not much. But on the other hand, this container. As you can see here, they're thriving. So sometimes they thrive and sometimes they do not. But it's very important. Hey, Stubbs Aquatics, thank you for joining. So glad you could join us on a Sunday evening. I, I think that in, in reality, um, there's different reasons why they die out. Because I see over here, it's not a matter of food. There's still green water in here, and, but they still died out. And I don't know why. There must have been a reason, but instead of worrying about it, I'm just going to reset. And I'm going to uh, use the Daphne in this particular container to reset those other tanks, those other jars. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to demonstrate how I do that. First thing to do is... Um, uh, first thing I need to do is go ahead and... and um, I think I'm going to grab a container that is going to hold a, a um, an amount of green water that will be used for 
seeding the next batch. So what, what I'll do is I'm going to siphon out uh, two liters and I'm going to take a two liter, uh, just two liters is all I need. Now I'm going to take my siphon, I'm going to hold it about the center of the tank. The reason I'm going to put it in the center of the tank is because the center of the tank has less likely I'm going to be grabbing these little seed shrimp because they hang out along the walls and anything else. I don't want, definitely don't want to uh, take off the bottom because I just want the, the algae that's growing and suspended in the water. That's what green water is. It's a, it's a free, free swimming um, type of algae. So what I really want to do is take this algae and the free swimming algae and try to get it as pure as possible. So that's why I'm going to take it from the center. And I'm only going to take uh, two liters. And then the rest, I don't mind um, using even seed shrimp. I don't care. I can put that in the bottles that I'm going to be refilling. Uh, those two containers, for example, that they died out, I'm going to clean those. I'm just going to uh, scrub them out with a, um, um, a brush, and then I'm just going to reuse them. The reason I don't care if there's seed shrimp and other creatures in there is because I'm going to be feeding from those containers the fish and if I do see I don't like seed shrimp growing in my tanks but I have found that uh, only on occasion does that occur where you have a multiplicity of seed shrimp but I think that the seed shrimp itself um, can get eaten by certain fish so I, I've noticed that yeah there's been occasions when when they kind of got out of control but you know what frankly um, they, they're in there and they get eaten or they don't get eaten, but most of the time they get eaten. So, and they don't, they're kind of harmless unless they were in huge numbers and that's another issue. Okay, so let, let's see how we're going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, okay, I'm going to grab, let's see if I can put this where I, you can see. I'm going to grab the tanks and I'm going to talk over there. So hopefully... Uh, everybody can see me. You see what I'm doing? Let's see. I'm going to grab this, these two jars. Because these two jars are empty. There's nothing in them. And you'll see the crud at the bottom. Uh, what that is, is uh, I put one snail. I have one, like, ram's horn snail. And that snail is growing in there. And he's living in there. And I'll stick one little tiny bit of food, but uh, let's see how that works. So I'm going to grab, first of all, my brush. I use my bottle brush. It's simple as that. It's not that complicated. Okay, pull that out. I got to grab my snail. Okay. There's my snail. There he is. We're going to take um, I think I have any baby snails in here. No, no, no babies. So I'm just going to take my brush, whip it around the glass. Yeah, I just whipped it around, cleaned it out, and there you have it a clean, clean bottle. So we're going to put it in there. This one, I have uh, one snail. We'll keep him around. I only have the two snails left. I don't know what's happened to all my snails, but I don't mind. Putting that one out, and that one's done. Okay, so I have two bottles cleaned out. Not much to it. The green water's gone. What was in there was kind of getting pretty, so I have two clean glass jars. We're going to use those. Also, I'm going to um, grab a container. Be anyone. This is one. This two liter also. And this wide mouth container. I'm going to siphon the first siphon out of that tank into here as a, to seed the next batch. So let's take, um, I'm going to take this, this hose. And we're just going to do that. And then what's after this, we're going to fill the, the other two glass containers for feeding. Okay. 
change the camera around. Okay, there you have it. So, so now what I'm going to do is I have the jars and I have the container for reseeding or pouring back. And I have, of course, I haven't forgotten about the two snails. So I'm just going to throw the two snails in the jars, one in one. Um, the reason for the snails is because the snails eat um, little food and it produces a little bit of waste and then that's good for the environment. So it's like what you would naturally find. So it kind of mimics a little bit of a stable aquarium kind of thing. So let's uh, take the container and another jar. So you see what's down below. I'm just going to show you. Oh, the camera's on that side. Hold on. So you can see down below. I just have on the shelf there. There's the uh, containers, and I'm just going to drain. I'm going to hold this in the middle, and then pull out. It doesn't take long, actually. I'm filling up two liters. straight out of the center. Okay, that's the two liters. Now for the jars, I'm just gonna fill the jars. There's one jar. There's two jars. Voila. Okay. So that, that's it. I've used most of this, as you can see. Hey, Ray Aquatics, thank you for joining. And so that, that uses most of the water. There's still some left, and uh, it's kind of gucky at the bottom, so I don't have to keep that. Um, if I was, of course, going to do something with the tank down below, I could just pour that in the tank down below. Uh, since I'm only going to do the jars today, I'm going to wait three or four days, and then I'm going to reset the tank that's five gallons down below. And the reason why is because I'm going to grow green water for three days and you're going to see um, what's what's going to happen. Um, let, me, let me put the siphon down. Demonstrate what I have here now. Okay, this is green water. It looks pretty pure. I don't see any other creatures running around. If you can see, I think you can see that little thing up there. This tank that I set my camera down on is a little high. So there's, okay, that's, I have to hold the camera, but there's, there's one tank, I mean one jar. And here's the second jar, and I will take um, actual in fact, what I'm going to do, I forgot. Let me go ahead and take the last of this, and I will use it to feed the um, Daphnia from the other jar. So, now that I, I forgot, there is a third jar, isn't there? There's three, two, two glass ones, and then there's the plastic ones. So, let me uh, let me see what I can do to share all that. Okay. So now, um, here's my seed. But I'm going to pour that back into the into the tank above after I clean it. So let me um, take this one, which has lots of um, goodies, and goodies meaning daphnia. This is uh, red magna daphnia, daphnia or Russian daphnia. I forget exactly what strain it is. You can find different strains. Now I have uh, a special sieve or sieve sieve for the uh, Daphnia when I do this. The reason why is if I, can't, if I use a big hold net what happens in a big hold net um, you'll get just the adults and all the babies will be gone. Now this is the what I use it it cost me about sixteen dollars and it is like a it's like a linen material. It's very, very fine. So it it will 
it will let green water just go right through it. The algae goes right through it. But the little animals in it will get caught behind. So I'm going to pour this out. I'm going to pour this out and I'm going to actually pour it through here and get some, okay? Let me see if I can do that. Pour out. My mouth is start with. Okay, as you can see, what I've done here is now at the bottom, I pour, you see the Daphnia. So I'm going to take the first one and I want to put the Daphnia. Let's see if I can show you guys. I'm going to take this at the top. Let me just turn the camera a slightly bit so you can see. So I'm just going to take this with the Daphnia and push it down. Now watch, it goes into the water immediately. All the Daphnia goes flowing through. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it, I think. There it goes. I don't know if it's really good, in good focus, but you can see the Daphnia, see? So, what I just did was pull out some Daphnia, like a teeth, like a teeth, you know, so like a eighth of a teaspoon of Daphnia into this container. And now it's full, but it's, um, it's okay, it's just a start, and this is what's going to seed the um, Daphnia in this container. So I'll do the same thing with the next one. And here's the next one. I'll just set it right here. You can see, you can see it well. The ram's horn snail is still there. Let me grab some more Daphnia. Okay, so here's, here's my Daphnia, you can see them in there, so I'm going to seed the new, the new one with that, put them in there, and they go zipping around into the green water, okay, and now I have two containers with, green, with Daphnia, and we'll watch them and see. Now the two snails are in there, but the snails need some food, right? So what I use is... I have uh, some pleco sticks, and these are pleco sticks that you, you would buy, and I just have to have them on hand. I guess any little bit of fish food would work, but uh, I'm just going to put a half a pleco stick. This is what a full size looks like. It's uh, like that. I'm just going to take a half of one, and I'm going to put a half of one in there, and a half of one in the second. And so they both now have. Um, a little half pleco stick and and the snails will break it down and that's it so I'll just move these into position where I keep them on the shelf here I don't worry about giving these light because it seems as though the the amount of the amount of um, um, green water that's in there is actually going to be eaten up long before I don't have to really I could put a light over there to let it grow at the same time at the same rate I guess I just haven't bothered to put a light I think if I wanted to then I could grow like if I had a light on there for six eight hours I think I run at least six hours eight hours of light on this particular tank it's on a separate timer than the fish room so it gets a certain amount of light so bright light and now I have this little bit of water left as you can see, or it's a little too bright to see. Yeah, there's a little bit of water left. And that's what I'm going to feed the ones that were in the in the container with all the Daphnia. So there's still a lot of Daphnia, but they need a water change. And they need a water change. And you can see I poured out to get strain out some of the Daphnia. But you can see that's half gone. I'm going to take, um, let's see, it looks like... It looks like about enough. I'm going to go ahead and just pour it right in here because that'll feed these Daphnia. And I pulled out some as well, right? So let me, uh, let me grab my, my siphon. And uh, let's siphon out the rest. And I'm going to siphon it directly into the uh, tank.
Here it comes. Now maybe I could have poured out a little bit more water. It looks like I could have. But it's okay. What's on the bottom is, is kind of yucky anyway. I'm going to toss that amount of green water. It can go. And if you think, if you think this is, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to go at the pace that I normally do. When I'm, I'm just taking a little bit more time to explain. So I just poured this up all the way in the plastic jar. And you'll notice it's definitely greener. So all those Daphne in there, I'll watch it to make sure it doesn't crash. When I see that there's, um, um, <laughs> I hope the green water tastes better than it looks. Thank you very much. Uh, that's a message from UNC 13 Buck. All right. Yeah. I wouldn't try drinking that. Yeah. It doesn't smell bad. There's no smell or odor to it. It's just green water. It's like algae. It's like your, your fish tank. Even better, there's no fish in it to give it a real mess. So I'm going to move the light out of the way and take off the top and move the lights so that I can move this tank. So I'm going to take the tank out and I'm going to scrub the sides. Because what I want to do is, let's turn the camera around. What I really want to do is uh, show how... Um, maybe how I clean. Let's go down here. A little bit easier to see. There we go. I don't know. Huh. I wonder why that... Oh. Okay. So it's a little messy there, isn't it? So I'm going to take the... Uh, I'm just going to take the tank out. Okay. I don't know if you can see this, but... Let me see if you can see this. It's kind of mucky. There you go. See how mucky it gets in the bottom? And that's like algae and other things growing, but it's not green water. So I'm going to take this green water. And I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to give me some, uh, some water. Scrub it out. I guess I could do it just twice. What I do is uh, dig a, a scratch scratch pad for glass, and these scratch pads um, never seem to bother the glass. They're they're specifically not for aquarium use, and I think the reason they put that is on there is because. Um, if you use them on an acrylic, it'll scratch the acrylic. You'll use your acrylic um, very quick. Well, the scratch, you know, you'll scratch it all up. So I don't use it on acrylic tanks. I do use it on the glass tanks. So I think it's because I know what I'm doing, and it's not an issue. I've never had an issue using these scratch packs. I do a good job of getting most of the do a good job, an excellent job of getting most of the um, algae and, and also hard water deposits. I can even uh, work it I have a razor blade that I would use normally if there's a lot of stuff on the front cover, on the front glass, I mean. And I'm just going to see if we can make this look halfway decent again. I won't be able to get all the algae out. I mean, and without bleaching the uh, tank, it's just impossible to get, you know, the little algae will grow back, but that's why every so often it's, you're going to reset, you're going to reset the tank. So I have this two and a half gallon, it provides all the, um, it provides all the stuff I need, and there it is. Okay, it's ready to go, cleaned and ready to go. There's a little touch, let me take my razor blade and touch the top. Hard water green with the top is there, okay. I'm going to take it off. 
There we go. Clean that up. Okay, let's see how it looks. All right, I'm gonna put the tank back in position. Okay, I see. I see, I see a, there's a, okay, we're back here. I'm gonna put it back in position. I do see a spot with um, a big glob, glob of algae that didn't get rinsed out. So let me grab a towel and rinse that out. Wipe it out, I should say. There, got it. I position my tank here, back to where it was. I also have a, um, uh, a spot here for it, but it's I can see right between these two tanks. There's marks on this back tank, and I like to see those back marks, so I'm going to just position it there. Put my glass. Okay, getting ready. Here is, make sure I get the right one. Here is my green water. This is the green water that we took out initially from the center. So this is all I'm going to use for starting the new green water. Two liters of fresh clean green water. And then I'm going to fill it up with water from dechlorinated water or, you know, aerated water from my tank right behind. I'm going to turn on the pump, pump it in. So you can see I'm filling it up. It doesn't take long. And I'm just about there. The last thing to remember is you got to feed your green water. Now, a lot of people do it with um, a guppy. Some people I've seen even put a guppy in there and they survive just fine. They seem to thrive in green water. Have you ever seen guppies and fish in a pond that's full of green water? You see that it doesn't harm them. Although I don't particularly like the fact that um, a fish is swimming around in green water. It just doesn't seem to be as standard way of doing something because, I don't know, to me, I don't know, it just seems like this is much easier to be now. Now, the difference between what you're looking at now and what we had there just a moment ago is, frankly, the only difference is that it's clean. There's no more little bugs on the, on the walls. And uh, also, there is something else to consider, and that is it's, it's more transparent. So I've watered down the green water. It's not nearly as thick as it was. It's watered down. So what you see is kind of like, okay, it's like green tinge. I probably could get away with just a quart of um, green water to start restart. But where's the food? So I use fertilizer that's liquid because it's so convenient. I just buy it and do a pump. So I go to the... Um, um, I go to the store, I buy something that's... This is the one I use. You may recognize it. So this is simple because I just pump. I, I give it, this is two and a half gallons, I give it more than the regular amount that you would give an aquarium. And I go one, two, and that's really for 20 gallons, and this is only two and a half gallons. So it's really high amount of food in this little container. But the green water in three days will be dark green and ready to use for feeding the next group of Daphnia, or whatever else you want to use the green water for. I also like to... Um, Put in a small amount of aeration. I don't like to have a tank sitting around without aeration because aeration is what in actuality prevents um, stag stagnant water from occurring and I don't want any stagnant water or anything like that. So I'm just going to put in, a, I have a weighted uh, thing, I'm going to put a little bit of Right, that doesn't even, not even a bubble. I just want a tiny little bit of bubble. So, let's see, why is that not bubbling? Is it pinched or is it just... There we go, got it. Okay, it's just building up pressure. Okay, there we go. See, there's a little bit of... See that? It's, it's hardly anything. You can hardly see it. 
In fact, the camera is going in and out, okay, with the brightness. But it's just a tiny bit. I can put a little bit more. It's not going to hurt your fish or anything. I might turn it up. But I, I just would like to have a, even just a bubble. If I had a weighted, without the um, air stone, I could use that. So right now you're seeing it, and I'm going to close it up and then put my light on it. And there we go. I'm done. Light back over here. This is for the fish. In the next container. Okay. Now this this gets uh, the light directly close to the surface, and what is interesting about it is that when there's not enough nutrients, you'll know. You can tell easily that you need to add fertilizer, and that's because the green water turns yellow. So as it turns starts to go yellow and it's not green anymore, you got to do something quick. You got to give it nutrients because it's using all the nutrients up. So that's what I, I can do. I just look at it and say, oh, I need to add some um, fertilizer, or most of the time I just need to reset and go through the process of what I just did. So in a few minutes, of, um, I, I'm ready, it's nice clean, and when we come back next week, you'll see it's gonna be super green, super dark, and ready to go. Any questions about uh, any of that? I guess I know there's one question that nobody's asked, and I know it's kind of important when it comes to green water. Uh, yes, I do sell starter paramecia cultures to the USA folks. It's very simple. I send you a st small culture and um, it goes through the mail just fine. I've, I've even taken the paramecia cultures and put them in the mail or put them outside in the, in the winter, uh, Canadian winter, for three months. And at the end of three months, uh, I've taken the little container and I've looked at it and I see live paramecia in it. They're, they're pretty stalwart. And so they'll get through the, the cold. So it, when it's cold, they, they do fine. I don't know about the heat. They might, they might, might cause more of an issue, but I think they're pretty hardy. And so uh, a starter is all I can send because I'm not going to send obviously a gallon of water, you know, or 1.7 or one and a half liters of, of water through the postal system. But I can just throw it in a small container, and I've I've done this a number of times. It's helped people. So. It's all on the website, um, fisheasy.ca. You can order it there. I, I don't advertise my website much, but that's what it is, fisheasy.ca. <clears throat> the question that, that needs to come up is, okay, fine, that's green water for the Daphnia. W what do I use the Daphnia for? The answer to that is, uh, on several occasions, I like to have it in the fish room, always available, because there are times when I want to feed a live food to my breeders. I don't produce enough to be able to feed all my fish, and if I had tubs outside and I was producing lots of Daphnia, then okay, yeah, great, you know, just go out there, net a bunch, and, and a day later you're going to net another bunch, and you can do it every other day or every third day, you can net uh, um, a cup of Daphnia and feed it to all your fish in your fish room. But in my case, I'm looking at what, what can I use for my breeders. And the advantage of using Daphnia is I can put it when, when I put, like let's say, let's say for example, I have um, these, these tanks right behind me, these ones here, and I put, let's say for example, um, in this, this one here, I put a um, pair of barbs, maybe I'm breeding uh, tiger barbs, or I'm breeding hexazona barbs, or any barb really, and, and, I, and I have a, a grill bottom. I like to be able to feed them while they're in there, and at the same time, not have the live food die, go through the, the grill, and just lay on the bottom and follow the water. The advantage of using Daphne is that it goes up and down through the water column, they get eaten, and when they don't get eaten, all they do is reproduce and eventually when the fry come along and you do have a good spawn, a successful spawn, the Daphnia just are there with the fish until the fish are big enough to eat the Daphnia. And eventually you have no Daphnia. But during the meantime they might be living off and filtering out in the water, eating whatever they can out of the water and reproducing, etc. Producing even smaller Daphnia for the smaller fry, etc. Et Yes, these are Daphnia magna. I used to have some of the uh, Moina, some of the smaller 
uh, variety, but they died out on me and I didn't watch it close enough. I get, you know, you get so busy in a fish room and there's so many things going on and that, and that's what happens. Simply put, it's kind of sad, but that's the way it is. Sometimes you just, you know, something happens and you don't discover it until sometime later and ouch, you know, you've lost your daphnia. So I'm looking for a uh, replacement um, for my uh, smaller daphnia cultures and I liked using those but they, they weren't as easy as the Daphnia Magna to just maintain. But I know other people who have several and they do just fine. They like to set the uh, glass jars in the, in the window and that's a great place if you have a window in your fish room. Um, they like to put it where there's light and so they seem to do very well in, in the light. So that's the reason why I use the Daphnia Magna and I the bigger ones are nice because most of the breeder fish will eat it and as you know instead of just starving them while they're breeding because most people say oh don't feed them while they're breeding uh, I find that it stimulates uh, breeding and it's a great food to do that and so that's a little trick that when I when I go to put put the, the fish in there uh, I hope that answers any questions Okay, now let's go on to the rams. Uh, let's take a, uh, a batch of rams that I just got. These are the rams that um, um, laid eggs. Uh, actually, it was, was it, yes, last night or the, it could have been, could it could have been uh, the previous night, but I think it was last night they laid eggs. I didn't go in and take them out. Uh, it was late last night, I was still up. And I decided to just leave it in until today, only because um, I didn't. I didn't. I did I was. It was so late last night that I wasn't even sure that they were finished breeding. I wanted to make sure they were completely done. So sometimes it's usually I see them. Wa I watch them laying the eggs, and I don't seem to have a problem with them eating the eggs on the first night. They're usually protected if there's some light in your room. When you have rams, rams will have the tendency that all the all the the fry will just disappear and all the eggs will just disappear if it ever gets a blackout condition where they see nothing somehow in the next morning they they don't recognize them as their their eggs or, or their fry and and they just gobble them up i've see, i've had that happen and i've read about it and i've seen it in other videos and everybody says the same thing and it's so true so that's where you got to be careful just have a little light 24 hour night light during the time that they have fry with them, and that will make all the difference in the world. They won't, they won't uh, see them as, as food. They'll see them as, hey, that's, that's my fry. I've tried three pairs of rams in 20 hours with varying successes. 20 hours. Okay. Um, what, what is the 20 hours for? Or am I misunderstanding something? Go ahead and explain that a little bit more. I'd like to get into that. Now, let's go over to where the rams were. Oh, t oh 20. Oh, gotcha. Okay, 20 gallon high. 20 hours. 20 gallon high. I gotcha. Thank you so much for that clarification. Um, you mean the, t the three pairs were together in a 20 gallon? Or each one had their own 20 gallon? I can do three pairs in a 20 gallon. In that case, I definitely do remove the eggs that night because if for whatever reason, some, one of the ram is just getting a little more forceful, they'll, they'll chase away. If you have like a pleco in the tank, pleco will just come over and munch away. And I've seen rams attack and attack and attack and attack the, 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 the pleco and the pleco just munches away. He doesn't really care. He's got some valuable, tasty, high energy food. Yeah. So if you do have three pairs in one tank, what you do, okay, in that case, just be careful. What you do is you have your 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 spawning plate, rock, whatever in the tanks in various, all the corners, usually they like to make the corner because they feel like in the corner they can, they can definitely defend. And so that's what you see. Let me go up here and you can see what's happening. I mean, I thought I changed it. Okay, here, uh, the plates are in the corner. Okay, so you'll see, they feel like they can 
definitely, definitely uh, protect. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull them out. When I pull them out, I always put in another one. Let me go get a plate. I like them to have a replacement plate. So I'm going to pull it out, but I'm also going to put at the same time a replacement plate. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, there he is. Wow, what a big batch. I'll show you guys this. This is quite a bit. So I'm just going to pull this one out and put in the replacement plate. Whoop, that's a little messy. Let's see what they look like. Wow. Look at that. That's a good number. Okay, let's take a look and see what happens. I'm going to pull this out. Okay, my hands are all wet. I can't pick up the phone, but let me try. Okay, so here I am. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull them like this. I don't need to, I don't need to do anything else because there's water inside the plate. It's kind of nice when they do it like this. I, if it was on a rock, I would just have the water ready, and then I would take the rock and just quickly transfer it it's for for a quick second or two it's not going to be an issue so now i i've got a clean uh container ready to go and what i'm going to use is uh this this is uh actually ro water you can see my ro water uh filter is heated so it's not cold i've got ro water and i'm just gonna put it in there like uh, can get away with about that much for now okay so then I'm not too worried about a little bit of water being on our row we're not trying to prevent that what we're trying to do with the use of our row water is prevent and I usually position it like that so that the eggs fall. When they hatch, they're going to fall down to the bottom. And they're going to just fall into the, the bottom of the plate and kind of congregate down there. So the purpose of the RO water with ram's eggs is to keep them from calcifying. And what I find is that during this process, it will prevent issues with hatching. But if you had really hard water especially that's why you'd want to do it but on the other hand don't worry once they hatch when I change the water I'm using regular water I'm not using RO water so that's the extent of it so let's just check to see what the mm -hmm. let's see what this is can you read it yeah 23 23 TDS not bad I use, I, I don't have a DI, I just have RO water. So usually it's around nine ish. Maybe by my using a little bit of water from the tank, it, it produced even a couple more uh, levels. But that's it. So what I'll do is mark the, mark the tank, and I'm going to also put um, uh, methylene blue in there. So uh, I've been putting in this situation, uh, since this is going to have to last another day or two. Uh, without the parents, I'm going to be blowing. I'm going to put uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's just do five. And I'll, so all I'm going to do is five, five drops. I usually take a picture of the eggs and the pair and put it in my notes. But I'm using my camera for this filming, so I'm going to have to do it with the blue. Uh, I don't know if I can take a picture. Oh, oh I can take a picture. Um, by grabbing it out of the video, I guess, if I wanted to. So now I'm just going to add some air. And I have some air right here. And let's go up here and turn on the air. And the, the purpose of the air is just to circulate the um, methylene blue. But also I'm going to add... I'll, I'll modify this a little bit to get the uh, flow very close to the eggs themselves. So 
I know you can't hardly see because of the glare in the background. If I stand there, it would take away. Okay, there we go. So now it's all turned blue, and um, it's very strong. And I'm going to I'm going to mark it as uh, yesterday's date, and I'm just going to um, let it sit for three days. They'll hatch, and then three days more they'll go free swimming. So that's what you see here. Um, I showed this earlier, but for those who weren't here, these have reached the six day mark and they've started free swimming. And sometimes I use, uh, put the, I can put the plate in one of these glass jars. In fact, I was going to do it if I had moved these guys already, I'd have the glass jar available right here and I can watch them very closely. But today I just used the um, overflow box, breeder box. And they, these guys have just started hatching. I mean, just started free swimming. And these are the ones that are going to be needing food now. And I'm going to use, uh, for two days, I will use vinegar eels. In fact, um, why don't um, I uh, mention also that uh, water quality is important once you start feeding. So I'll be watching very closely. It's easy to drain out. I have a as you know a a uh, device here for you know getting the water out I just use a uh, tube but <laughs> believe it or not when it comes to this I, I've taken this little bit of um, foam and I'll put uh, over the end of the uh, over the end of the of this and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and foam it and then use that rubber band just to hold it on. And then I just go ahead with a regular water treatment and the fry don't get sucked out. I found that that's the easiest way not to have issues. So I'll change the water and that's important. And then I can uh, start feeding baby brine shrimp about two days. I think on the second day I, I actually start just a dab of baby brine shrimp. Um, that means that maybe tomorrow or definitely Tuesday since today is Sunday um, I will actually put a tad of baby brine shrimp in here and they can start picking at them and they will have grown in the two days with the uh, smaller food. Now I, I probably won't use microworms in this case whereas I would use microworms with these fish because when they're at the bottom hey let's go fishing let's go fishing right now I'm going to just take a, a quick uh, look at uh, for some Lucipinus uh, eggs, it's kind of fun sometimes to to get them. So let me see if I can. Here they are in the tank. Oh, oh, that's stupid! Look at that. The last time I was in there, I forgot to put the the top back on the the trap. Well, that's that's no good. There's not going to be any eggs then. Oh, no, how ridiculous, huh? Well. Let me uh, fix that. Sorry, guys, or gals. Sorry about that. This needs to go on top. And that's what gives them the cave. And I will put that back on there. And so there's definitely no eggs in there today because there was no cave. Hmm. Okay. Well, next time then we'll go fishing and see if we can catch some eggs. You know, if it wasn't for this live stream, I probably wouldn't have even noticed that. And I would have had to... Um, gone a few days before I was checking again. I check it about every three days and that way if between those three days they lay the eggs they'll hatch. I'll either get babies, little tiny fry hatched wigglers or I'll get um, the actual eggs. Well it's been an hour and so I hope today's live stream was informative. The whole goal is to share with some things with everybody that uh, um, that uh, can be used in your fish room or put in practicality of, of your regular husbandry. I thank you very much for joining. Is there any more questions? Let's see if anybody... Yeah, no fishing today. Here's a question. Vinegar eels are better than paramecia for new rams. Okay. Very, very good question. And I've used both. I've used the paramecia for the rams. 
When it comes to black rams and electric blues, the fry are definitely smaller. When it comes to uh, electric blues and black rams, I think the, their inbreeding is actually causing them to have smaller fry. However, German blue rams are going to be a little bigger, slightly, but there's been so much inbreeding on those two that I think also the fry are getting pretty small. So that's why they don't go straight to the um, baby brown shrimp. However, I'm going to reveal to you something I discovered more recently, and that is when you cross a German blue with an electric blue, um, the eggs come out good size, and that's actually what we were just looking at. There's a cross between electric blue uh, father and a German blue mother. And what I found is that the fry come out much bigger, and there's a lot more um, um, strength, shall we say, or they're just coming out a little more robust, and they even get bigger as adults. And I've noticed in my adults, uh, they're referred to that some of the colorations I've gotten have been very close to what you'd see in the strawberry rams that I pictured in the past. Nice, nice kind of reddish belly with spots on it, kind of resembling the surface of a strawberry. Well, it turns out that the strawberry rams or the cross actually they go straight to baby brown chin and they, they don't even need either one. But let me go back to your, your question because I didn't answer it directly. The answer is, when you're feeding small, small, small fry, maybe it's CPDs, Daniels, or maybe it's um, um, maybe it's uh, the Barb's. Definitely, I use the Paramecia. It makes very small, small food available for a very small fry, and essentially needed for the long fin rainbows or thread fin rainbows and also the fork tail rainbows and even I'm breeding now are trying to get some batches of luminatus, the pseudomogal luminatus. Those will need the, the, the paramecia. The micro worms don't go well with the, the, the they don't go well at all with the um, blue eyed rainbows because simply the little fryers are hovering around the surface of the water. They go up to the top. They're never at the bottom. They don't eat at the bottom. So the microworms sink to the bottom and then they're no good. They probably could eat them, but they never think to go down there. So you need something that's at the surface. And, my, and vinegar eels is sort of like the same basic size as the microworms, but the microworms go to the bottom, whereas vinegar eels have to wiggle their ways up to the top to get air. So they wiggle all the way up to the top and that's where the, the rainbow fish will get them. So that's why I use rainbow fish. But after the paramecium, when the rainbow fish get big enough, they're going to be fed um, some vinegar eels. With the rams, I feed the vinegar eels because it's smaller than the baby brine shrimp. And they're throughout, as you can see, what happens is after they go free swimming, the rams go to the top. I don't know why they go to the top, but they do. And they hover around there, and that is a dangerous time. If you overflow your device, if you're trying to do a water change or something, and you could overflow your container and whoosh, you could take two or three hundred fry and just whoosh them down the drain. I've had that happen, so I feel bad about it, but, you know, I kick myself and I say, why did I do that or let that happen? It's just imperfection. Um, imperfect world. My mistake. I forgot that the water was dripping back. I'll just be dripping it. Next thing you know, I'm looking at it and it's dripping all the way down into the sink and I look in the sink and then there's all kinds of fry. Those are mistakes that I make. Those are mistakes that anybody can make, so be careful. So it's very important. When they're hovering at the top especially, it's like, okay, I have to stand there because if I'm going to do water change, that's where it's so important to uh, drain and also um, um, drain and then also uh, refill very carefully. Refilling can be disastrous. 
So that's the reason. I hope I answered your question. Um, those three foods, I find uh, the paramecia, the microworms, and the vinegar eels, and then of course baby brian shrimp, the fourth food being a uh, staple. But those are the four I basically use all the time. So that's what I'm going to use. Now while I've been standing here, it's very interesting, um, just for a final treat, I know, and I think I've answered most of the questions. Yeah, yeah, just, just so you can see, there's been something going on over here, and I can see it from a distance. Now watch. Watch the Luminatus, the male and the female. The females are going in and the males are, they're spawning in this mop. See if we can catch them in the act. The females kind of hang around the mop. The males are excited because they're near the mop. And when the female starts poking her head in there, the male, there he is right there. They go right in with her. There they go. And there's two males and they kind of push her into going and whoosh. I think they just did it right there. I think inside, then she pops out at the top. See him pop out of the top? So we're watching them. They're spawning right now. I was watching them on display earlier, and now all these males, they're getting excited. They're kind of showing off to one another, but they're keeping a close eye on the female. So that's what happens. Over here, another one is doing the same thing. I have two females in the tank. I've got to get a lid on this tank. I've lost two females already. And because the females jump, I don't know why. I've I've found them on the floor. Um, of course, uh, more in the jerky uh, sort of condition. And the next morning, and I don't know why, but I need to get a. It's it's kind of a hard tank because it's very. It's a it's a custom tank. It's not. It's not something standard. So I. So these are them. They're they're, they're just kind of poking in and out of the mop, and. It's, kind of neat to see. Oh, she's going to stick her... There she goes. She's going in. He follows. And then if she, he can see her go in. Oh, there she goes. She goes in. He follows. And she's still poking around. Maybe looking for a good spot. There they go. She came out the other end. Maybe they, they lost her. You know? So they're going in and out of this mop just while we're talking. So I saw that from a distance and I said, you know, i got to share that with you because that's something um, It's kind of neat. I love it with the uh, blue-eyed rainbows, the different species there are. I've done Gertrude, and right now in the fish room I only have these, the Luminatus, and I also have the Furcatus, and they're kind of neat. So that's the... Um, I gotta get busy now. I gotta let you all go so I can take care of this uh, group and some of the others. Um, get them in bigger tanks. Most of these, including this one, they're ready to go into a, either a breeder box or one of these two and a half gallons up above. So that's what I'm gonna do. All these have to be done this weekend. On the weekend, it's fish move time. Every weekend, it's like that. Crazy amount of time moving fish around. During the week, I'm usually just doing uh, things like this, taking out uh, little little uh, spawns, and I need a lid on that one. I'm just going to grab a lid. I keep the lid on just because it I'm trying to keep as much. But you can see from this tank, it's hard to get a lid on this this tank, especially when I'm hanging these things on it. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I've got some plexiglass over here that's just about the right width. This here, and I'm going to cut it and do something for this tank to get a, a lid on it. And mostly for two reasons. It's to, for humidity control, but also to keep those fish from jumping out. I didn't really feature these fish, but just so you know, I've got, I've got these uh, red lizard catfish. Uh, crazy amount in here. There's probably close to 40 of them now. All these babies everywhere. And I'm hoping uh, daddy's in the cave. I'm hoping maybe for an, a third spawn, a uh, third successful spawn, I should say. I'm hoping for that. I don't see if the female. She was, she was super big, but all over the place. You see these babies. They're just everywhere. They're the cutest things, and they eat baby brine shrimp right away. But uh, some of them are just growing, growing like weeds. 
and they like to hang around the flow so back in the wall in the plastic containers you see them everywhere hanging off and the tank is just full of them so I'm anxious to see in a few months time to see how well they do and that will be an awesome uh, addition to the gene pool that we know is very much needed in these fish because there's just not that many of them around they're not that common in the fish stores and we need to see more of them in there so thank you very much it's been an hour and 15 minutes and everybody's uh, done well um, just enjoying themselves in the tanks behind me uh, there was this female she was jumping around while we were talking as well I'm not sure what has startled her okay she's maybe calm down now maybe I got her worked up so thank you everybody and I appreciate all the support uh, of course you know sharing is caring and uh, I also appreciate the thumbs up and the subscriptions and please uh, come back next time I do live stream there is a couple of videos that we're going to um, uh, be releasing in the next few weeks based on uh, my time that I can find to work, sit on the computer and to do some editing so I've got some neat um, neat stuff to show thank you everyone and uh, have a great weekend if you haven't already I guess we're getting close to the end of the weekend so hope you had a nice weekend it's very hot out there in this part of the country and I know in many parts so I hope it's uh, you're keeping cool so again thank you and have a great time but always as I say keep it real <laughs>